This is the IFF TV podcast. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are here discussing St. Patrick's Athletic. I am joined by Jer Brown, our own correspondent, but he's obviously a St. Patrick's fan, as you can see by the polo he's wearing there. And we're here discussing St. Pat's, the preview for the season. I suppose we'll go back a little bit, Jer, just to last season and just kind of obviously with the lockdown and stuff like that the season was all over the place but from a St. Pat's point of view Stephen O'Donnell's first gig how have you found his stint in charge so far? Yeah as I say like last season it's a funny one to kind of judge because it only ends up being 18 games so it's only really half of what would be a normal season you'd have to say it was disappointing uh, like only five wins in total last season three of them came after the restart which you know isn't really kind of good enough didn't win any of the last four games when they got themselves in a good position to challenge for European football. I think we'll all remember that game when they went up to Finn Park and lost 3 2 to Finn Harps. That was kind of really the death nail, I think, for European football. They got a couple of decent, respectable results throughout the course of the season, like taking the point off Dundalk home and away, particularly the away game, the impressive performance. Got a point away against Shamrock Rovers, but probably that was a game that could have been there for the take. And you were at it, like, that was Rovers were getting present with the trophies there in Paris mood, they were definitely there if they're taken and didn't grab it. So you'd have to say disappointing. Went out with the cup of the first hurdle as well to Finn Harps. Signed Georgie Kelly uh, in that long COVID break. Thought that he was kind of going to fill the void of putting the ball on the back of net. Never really happened for him, unfortunately, last season. And just, yeah, it was a stop-start season. I think they only won back-to-back games twice away to Cork and previously before that home against Shell. So sixth-place finish, it was disappointing. And even though... They went into the final day with a sim hope of European football. It was never really going to happen and it was a major disappointment to end up in the bottom half of the table. Yeah, because like, I think it's an ongoing thing with, with St. Pat's and you're probably fed up with me of hearing me say this. It's just, it's just so inconsistent. Like One week they can go out and do a performance, like you said, against Dundalk that night when uh, I think it was the first game back from lockdown. It was on TV. That was the first game back and they go out and put on a performance against Dundalk and then they'll go and lose to someone like bottom of the league or whatever. They're just so inconsistent and you just never know what St. Pat's are going to turn up, I feel. Yeah, like that's a prime example, that Dundalk game. And then three or four days later, they had a rearranged game home against Derry that was called off from bad weather in the first half of the season. They lose that 2-0 home. That just kind of sums up. They never really kind of fully kick on from momentum um, as well. Like defensively, they were pretty solid last season. Like They didn't really kind of concede too many goals. I think... Um, I know when the league resumed after the first four or five games they had the best defensive record in the league and that's even when Shamrock Rovers had a 100% record so it just shows how good defences were but just putting the ball in the back of the net the last couple of years has been really really poor it was an issue towards the tail ends of the Liam Buckley days Harry Kenny never really seemed to solve it and so far after it's hard to say a season and a bit considering that he only came in for the tail ends of the 2019 season and didn't get a full normal rattle of 2020 but Stephen O'Donnell so far hasn't fully addressed it maybe Signing the likes of Ronan Coughlin, I know they brought in uh, a young lad, Melvin uh, Lambert, 18-year-old from Reading. He's had a f- bit of first-team football with them already. Maybe it can kind of help and kick-start, but I think that is the biggest problem, that if they can finally start putting the ball in the back of the net on a more regular basis, because I touched on defensively, it's never really a major issue. Yeah, well, just while you're discussing the transfers and stuff like that, we might as well um, shout out to Andrew Dempsey, who has actually put out a list of the transfers, and he's been updating it Um so we're using his list here on footballscope.blogspot.com. Um, so check that out for sure. Now, um, I suppose we'll just kind of go from the re-signs first year and then we'll go talk about the ins and then we'll talk about the the outs. All right, so um, so the re-sign, Dara Burns, Ben McCormick, Jamie Lennon, Ian Birmingham, Jason McClelland, Shane Griffin, Chris Forrester, Robbie Benson, Lee Desmond, Billy King, Kyle Robinson, Keen Corbley, Keen Kelly, Josh Keeley. So they've all re-signed. And then the ins are Ronan Coughlin, John Mountney, Sam Bone, Maddie Smith, uh, Jaros from Liverpool. I'm not going to try and say his first name. Alfie Lewis, Paddy Barrett, and um, Melvin Lambert, as you say, or Nahum Melvin, Melvin Lambert has here. Um, I don't know, I'm from Reading. So just talk me through from your own point of view, the sign is there, who you're most happy with, and obviously with the re-sign as well, who you're most happy with, because I imagine like the likes of Ronan Coughlin and stuff like that, we'd spoken saying that he's probably going to go somewhere like Dundalk and then Pat's on him, so I think it was a actually really good signing. 
Yeah, the race, I think definitely the one that uh, strikes out for me and just from talking to a couple of Pat fans is Biddy King. He had a pretty good debut season last year. He always looked exciting and prospect and always looked to try and make things happen, particularly that last game against when Bowles and when he needed a win to give us any chance of getting European football. He was one to few players that tried to make things happen, got the winner against Cork in a regular game. Good to keep hold as well, the likes of you know Jamie Lennon, who scored for Ireland on 3-1 towards the tail end of the season. Chris Forrester, Robbie Benson, I think there were signs towards the end of last season that they were starting to produce the talent that we know that they have. Ian Birmingham, I think this is what, his 10th or 11th season now. It's mad to think that he still is only 31, but he brings great experience there as well. Shane Griffin, had an up and down kind of season, a bit like Pat's last year, but he is a league winner of Cork, so he brings a good bit of experience there. From the signings, you probably have to say the one that we're all going to hope that you know it's going to be the big difference is going to be the sign of the season is Ronan Cochran because they touched on that is an issue for St. Pat's probably since Christy Fagan, you know, kind of tailed away back in 2015, 2016. It's a regular goal scorer, and you know, he's shown signs and potential and glimpses at Saigon Rovers. He had a good season with them last year one of the top scorers in the league. No, he still didn't get double f- figures, but I think we'll let him off the fact that he only had maybe half the games he normally would get. So that's the one I think we'd be hoping that can really take off. Matty Smith and Sam Bowen, they come from a good Waterford team from last year. They're, they're both only in the early 20s, so it's good to kind of freshen up the squad as well. But they do bring plenty of experience. I think Sam Bowen was with um, Shamrock Rovers before as well. And John Mountney as well, similar one, like he's been around a long time. I think he made his debut for Dundalk back in 2011, 2012. He's only recently turned 28, so he still would feel he's only coming into the prime of his career. He had a lot to offer. He's two European campaigns at a high standard in Europa League group stages under his belt. Numerous league titles. Knows Stephen O'Donnell very well. Obviously, we'll even know the likes of um, Paddy Barrett, who was signed as well, former teammate of his, and Robbie Benson. So that would definitely help that we're getting players to have a winning mentality coming into the squad. Well, I think that's that's exactly it. You're bringing in players with a total different mentality who won things and know what it takes to win things, whereas maybe some of those players that have been there I uh, have been good players but maybe haven't won trophies and stuff like that but I think with um with Mountley like I had a Dundalk fan on with me yesterday and he was just saying like even be- he was there even before Stephen Kenny was at Dundalk and he was seemed to be like their go-to man in Europe and stuff like that so the thing about Mountley is he, he could play centre mid or right mid as well so he can play in different positions and, and as he played them well and I think with Sam Bowen as well last season at Waterford I'm pretty sure he's a centre midfielder, but last season at Waterford, he was playing at centre back and doing a really good job. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, right back, right back. Um, and he was doing a really good job of it. I, th- I actually think he's a really, really good, intelligent player. I think that's something that Stephen O'Donnell's brought in is like intelligent players who don't just play one position but can play in different positions and are good at them as well. Yeah, and like even if you can, as I just touched on there, the likes of like Robbie Benson probably would have been their standout signing into the 2020 season. Chris Forrester who had been a standout sign from the previous season. Like you could see kind of glimpses towards the end of last season. Like you were at a game where, where Benson scored a lovely header against Dundalk. Forrester scored a wonderful goal against Shelburne. I think another match that you were at. Like there definitely mm-hmm. was signs towards the end of last season that they were showing their potential and quality. And if these new players can kind of jet in and them type of players can kick on from where they finished off last season. Like even Jamie Lennon, I think, ends up being Pat's player of the month for November. Then went on to score for the Ireland under 21. So there's plenty of talent and potential there, particularly in that midfield area for St. Pat. So, if, you know, these new players can kind of jet in and click with them. It'd be great. Like pre season, it's always hard to really kind of read much into it. I never really do because Pat's always seem to have a very good pre season, but can be always kind of so starters to the league. So it's, I wouldn't read too much into the fact that they've beaten both first division teams quite comfortably. Definitely Wexford quite comfortably so far, but. It's just that kind of key thing. Like if they can hit the ground running early on, like the fix for this isn't particularly kind. Some they have to play the top three from last season all the way from home to opening five games. So they are going to be up against. It. Do you do you t- actually worry though from a goalkeeper point of view? You lost Brendan Clark, you lost Brian Marr, you lost um, Connor McCarns. So you lost three keepers there. I know you brought in the lad from Liverpool, but are you, are you a little bit worried that? You know, you lost three really good goalkeepers there. And obviously, two of them were up and coming. Connor Cairns was training with the under twenty ones and actually was brought in to train with the Ireland squad a few times as well. Yeah, I remember this time last when we were having a discussion for last season's preview, and the debate was like, who is going to be number one? Because as the feeling was, we had three good goalkeepers to choose from. You have 
Brendan Clark has been there, seen it all before with the club and with the league. As he touched on Conor Kearns and Brian Maher, both Ireland ex-underage players, and now all three are gone, which is really, really annoying and, and really frustrating. Like Brendan Clark home was a bit strange. He gets player of the season, then he signs for Shelburne a day later. Obviously, I'm, I'm sure it's a sign you're delighted about. But yeah, like the Kearns and Maher situation, because you would have been feeling that like Clark, you know, it was only a matter of time probably before he finished up at Pats anyway. You had two goalkeepers, one still a teenager, one in his early 20s. You're going to be in safe hands for years to come. And then you find yourself in a situation come November time and you don't even have a goalkeeper. But the Aros, like, it does come from a decent pedigree with Liverpool. He was on the bench for them a couple of times in the Champions League this year. Won an FA U Cup with them a couple of years ago as well. Team managed by Steven Gerrard. I think they won it on penalties. So, goes to show maybe he's a good shot stopper from ball being faced out from 12 yards out as well. And I think... Um, it could be an interesting season as well for um, of all the academy grad, uh, graduates who've got contracts signed. Connor Keeley, he was the under 19 player of the season last Josh. year. Josh. Oh, sorry, Josh. Sorry, I got the uh, first name wrong. Um, he was under 19 player of the season last year. The team that won the league. You'd think with the amount of fixtures that's going to be this year, with a lot of kind of rotation and stuff like that, it's probably going to be inclined to get a couple of chances. So it, it is going to be interesting. When it's not probably ideal. It's great and everything is that you're going into a season you've got two goalkeepers that are young and they're going to be hungry and ambitious and have probably got potential, but none of them are, are tested at senior level yet, which is a big concern going forward. But hopefully, like, with, you know, a decent back four and experienced back four in front of them, that will help them solve and settle in. I think what what's going to help and as well is the fact that you're getting players coming through your own ranks as well, so you're not going to have to go out and buy so many players, like... I think you look through the list there there's a lot of players that have been brought up from from the younger ages and stuff like that and I think Jero Bryan's working hard with the underage there to start bringing it through players and, and it's, it's really starting to show fruits of it I mean you, you look at Bowes and the way they work with St. Kevin's and the way they're bringing through players all the time I think it's about time now St. Pat's start bringing through the players and and you know hopefully they start shining for yourselves and, and for Ireland's sake as well yeah, I think the same, or Bowles has definitely uh, laid the temp- template over the last couple of years, the amount of problems and young players they brought through. And even Shamrock Rovers probably having the benefit of the fact they could get a second team in the first division last year and what benefit that's going to stand to their younger players in years to come. I know they aren't there this year, but even just having the one year of senior football experience. But no, I touched on like that under-19 team that won the league last year. Like Even already there's early green shoots from that. Like Ben McCormack, I remember, was a player we were talking about this time last year. You know, he was part of that team. Dara Burns as well, another player, part of that team that featured last season as well. Like so Kyle Robinson, who got the winner in that final against Bowles. We mentioned uh, Josh Keeley. Probably going to be one of them players that I think will probably benefit the most and get the most game time because of you know, our inexperience in a goalkeeping situation. And then you have other players as well, like Keane Kelly and stuff like that. So it is encouraging and it is promising. I think from the 17 team as well got to the final of that league. I think they lost out in that as well. Um, so there is kind of good signs and it is encouraging that you can bring through your own players because when the day does finally come and we all pray for when you get fans back on the ground, like, you know, it's a community sport in a lot of ways and, like, for fans to see players that they would know and face they would recognise and local boys, like, it, it always helps and always kind of keeps that strong connection between the players and the fans. Yeah, well, I think, you know, you look at it now, like, uh, you actually did bring through a player last year, Luke McNally, who left and, and left for a... Uh, that's a right, nice yeah. fee for the club as well. So we might as well just talk, let's just kind of lastly on the outs then because we spoke about the ins and the resigns. But obviously, Brendan Clark, Connor Kearns, Dara Markey, Rory Feely, you're a mate, uh, Jordan Gibson, James Duna, Paul Cleary, Luke McNally, success, Ed, Ed Ogun, Daniel Dobbin, and Kyle Robinson, who you mentioned there, has just gone to Wexford on a loan, uh, just obviously to get him some, some senior football, I'd imagine. Yeah, big time, especially only 18 years of age. Yeah, I suppose, as I touched on already, like the Brendan Clark one, I think was one that kind of caught us all a little bit um, by surprise. Dara Markey, probably not too much of a surprise. I think he's kind of struggled to really kind of hold down his pace. No doubt about it, like he's shown before in the past with some of the wonder goals he scored that one against Derry. There is talent, there is potential there, but you know, he's at the stage, I think, in his career, he wants to become a regular at first team level, so I don't think it was just something that he kind of grasped with both hands at Pats. Luke uh, McNally, disappointing from the sense that, like, you know, as you mentioned, young player we brought through, got into Ireland 21 squad, really leader at the back. But, like, when a, a club that's in League One and, the, you know, a club not only just in League One, but a team that got to the playoff final last year comes knocking on the door, I think it's very hard to turn down. As you mentioned there, 
a good fee as well. The club isn't going to turn that down as well. Like uh, Jordan Gibson or is a disappointing one because I was kind of impressed with him when he came in for the second half of last season, got a couple of goals. But he's gone to Cyber Overs to join Nane Buckley's resurgence there as well. And George Kelly, I know, was only on loan with us, but he's gone to Bohemians as a touchdown. Never really kind of quite happened for him. And Rory Feely, yeah, um, like who that was his second spell back to the club last year. It was only his first year. You kind of felt maybe he might have stayed around, but I suppose the attraction, the lore of, of going to Bohemians and what Keith Buckley's building or Keith Long, sorry, is building there. Like his brother used to play for them as well about 10 years ago. So, so maybe just with a small bit of a family tie and connection, but yeah, some disappointing departures there as well, but I suppose that's part and parcel of the league of Ireland football that like with the one year contract, you're always probably bound to lose four or five players at least every season. I think I think that's why it's actually good that he's got a fee for Luke McNally. I think it's important that yeah. clubs start getting fees for players, and I think that's the key thing about developing and blooding players through, and that if they are performing. And the League of Ireland is becoming that type of league now, where people are look at Joe Hodge, for example, coming across to get development in a senior league because it's not you know it's not fellas trying to chop your leg off anymore. It is more of a development league now, which is a lot better because it, it allows players like say Luke McNally to flourish, and maybe some of the younger lads that have have you know made that list and even Ben McCormack you know didn't really do much last year but maybe this year he'll get a bit more of a run you can see what he's capable of because I think he was an underage player of the year at one stage you know he looks like he has a lot of ability and stuff like that I just haven't really seen him play that much at senior level I've only ever really seen him coming off the bench in games that are either just over or they've already been beaten so it's not a case where he can come on and change the game you know yeah, I think you even just have to look at like at Pat's in. It's like three players coming in alone from Premier League uh, from England, and two of them being Premier League clubs. And as you touched on as well with Derry getting Joe Hodge, I think it even goes goes to show how the reception of our league has now been treated across the world. That they are looking at like this is actually a good league for you now to to learn the game, get an experience playing against all the men. But you're not going to get kicked or thrown around the place. You're you know you're going to get a chance to grow and develop yourself. Like as you touched on there, like Reading, like Selvin. Uh, Melvin Lambert on loan to us like he's played in cup competitions for their senior team this season like you know this is another opportunity for him to kind of kick on and Reading probably look at it that way same with Alfie Lewis who's been a regular in, in West Ham's on the 23 side for the last five years they're thinking now this is probably the next step in your in your progression he made the bench for their senior team in one game last season against Chelsea so it is good to kind of say that like English clubs are now kind of thinking like oh yeah we'll send you on loan there but it's not just for, this, for the sake of it, it is sending, we do think it is going to be a good benefit for you because like the standard of the league and we see ourselves from watching week in week out there's no more like kind of long ball hoop ball a lot of teams now do try and keep the ball in the deck play football it's a more open expansive game which is good and encouraging to see mm. the only thing i think that lets the players down is the pitches it's, it's not the football it's yeah. the football can be good but sometimes it's hard to play on a bobbly pitch and you're trying to play it from the back and stuff like that but you can definitely see signs of progress within the terms of football and philosophies of the new managers coming in and stuff like that as well but I think even some lads from Cork last season came in um, from from Arsenal Joseph Oluwu and then you had uh, Dijan Darling I think he was from QPR so the, it is seems to be an ongoing trend now of players coming across the water and, and trying to test themselves in the league and you've seen players like Jack Byrne go on and develop after coming home because it's a, it's a league in which if you do need to get the ball down and play, and Rovers are the template for everybody else. The way they play football is brilliant, and the way they change it up during the game. I just think Stephen Bradley is a really good manager, but enough about Shamrock Rovers. Just on St. Pat's then, just in your own point of view, what would be a successful season for St. Pat's this year? Uh, quite simply, one way or another, it has to be get back into European football. We haven't qualified outright for a European spot since the 2015 season. That's six years ago. I know there was one year we got in there because of, there was issues with Waterford. But um, no, it has to be to get back into European football. I think there is a good chance this season. I think the way the league is looking this year, like Rovers with their recruitment, despite losing Jack Byrne, like they look in a very, very strong and stable position. I don't really see anyone majorly challenging them. So I could see them win the league by 10 plus points this season. Like Bowles and Dundalk obviously still have a couple of good players and strong experience, but they've lost a couple as well. So I think there is an opening, there is a chance there. Like the view will be maybe Saigo slightly overachieved last year. Now they've recruited quite well, but they could be caught on the hop with maybe one eye in Europe this season. Derry are a funny side. You never really know what you're going to get with them. They kind of seem to be good one season, bad the next season. They had a disappointing season last year, so they might take a little bit of looking at this year. Waterford, you don't really know what's going to get there. They've lost so many players. 
new manager coming in, Kevin Sheedy, he seems to be getting a lot of players. Again, another example, seems to be getting a lot of players on loan from championship clubs in England. So players there that might be taking a gifted but on a short of the league. And then you're probably thinking Finn Harps and the two new boys are going to be battling for uh, survival. So I think it has to be the aim for European football. My mentality the last couple of years, I always felt this is going to be the season we're going to get back in. Like we signed really well, pre-season's going in really well, all the vibes and summer really kind of happened. So I'm going to maybe just take a backward step this year and kind of go in with kind of no expectations and just kind of see what happens. And maybe if I kind of put it out there saying that I don't think we're going to get Europe, I might finish fifth. I might end up uh, being wrong and I hope I am being proven wrong, but European football has to be aimed this year, but I'm not a hundred percent sure whether we'll just have enough to get there. Okay. Well, I do have to actually get a actual position that you would, you think that you'll finish. So you can have a, like a, your head says this and your heart says that, which is what Kieran did yesterday. So, where you think Pats will actually finish, whether it's where you want them to finish and then where you actually think they'll finish? Uh, I'll be the first man to hold my hand up if I'm wrong and saying this and I have no problem admitting it, but I think Pats will finish fifth. I think we'll just miss out on Europe. Okay, so well, well, look, it, it's, it is a hard one to predict with Pats, yeah. I, I think, anyway, because I think sometimes they could be definitely competing for third spot. I think they could. I think they have the squad every year to do that. But whatever happens, they just, in some games, they just lose the run of themselves. And uh, maybe, look, if they can add goals to the defensive um, capabilities that they showed towards the back end of last season, then you never know because they seem to yeah. be showing up to goals but just not putting it in the opposition's net. And if they can do that, then who's to say they can't finish up towards the European places? 100%. And I kind of touched on there as well. Like, the start of the season isn't the kindest. Obviously, you have to go to... Rovers away on the opening day and they also touched on Dundalk away and Bohemians away all grounds we don't have a good record in and the opening five games of the season so them two home games sandwiched in between the home against Strata and Derry are crucial for me if we get six points from them it kind of takes the pressure off and they leave us kind of nicely and comfortable in the table and look you never know we might sneak a draw we, we drew actually away with both Channel Rovers and Dundalk last year so we might get another draw there as well like just before the first series of games ends, like a couple of crucial home games well, against Waterford and, and Longford, we can kind of win our first four home games. So I think we're all very winning, but that's going to leave us with 12 points. And then you'll be kind of inclined to think we should pick up something along the way on the road. And that would definitely help heading into the second quarter of the season. Fingers crossed, obviously all going well with, with the vaccination programme and stuff like that, that we will get through the full round of four round of fixtures this season. Yeah, and then hopefully by the second round we'll have fans because I think that's what Jonathan yeah. Hill has been aiming at. But uh, whether that happens or not is obviously remains to be seen so far. But I think I think you're right if if Pats can start the season off well. I know you said they've got a really tough run in at the start, but if they can manage to get a few decent results, and then obviously if they're playing teams that are a bit weaker than them and start picking up results, then then you just never know. I think it's all about getting. Uh, a good start to the season, considering it obviously is it's not as as many fixes as you would obviously like. But um, I think it's about hitting the ground running more so than anything else, you know. Yeah, big time, and you never know as well. Maybe we could be in a good position that we can have a good cup run. It's been a long time since a good cup run. 2016 semi finalists. So last time we can say we actually done well in the cup competition. Yeah. Well, Jay, I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time out. Uh, it's good to talk about St. Pat's. I know you love talking about them. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's been a good season preview. I hope uh, all St. Pat's fans get a chance to listen to this. And whether they agree or don't agree, let us know in the comments what you think. If you've anything to add on that, Jay, feel free. No, I think I've, I've had it all said there. Probably I'm going to come in for a bit of a backlash for not talking stuff. Say, yeah, yeah, we'll get Europe. Like, but like I said, I'm hoping if I go in with that kind of mentality of kind of like with no expectation that you'll end up being happy instead of with high expectation and being disappointed. Yeah, I know all about that being an Everton and Shells fan. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, guys, don't forget to drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe as well. We'll have more videos and more season previews with other fans as well. Make sure to check them out and we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. This is the IFF TV podcast. Like, rate and subscribe.